Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we are going to talk about Rocket Lab's proposed Neutron Rocket. I've called it Neutron N because they had a previous Neutron Rocket model which was basically a fake. It was a thing that they were distracting us with and I had made a version of that one too. You can see that tank there. Uh, but it turns out that that was not their plan, and so I have to call it something else because I still have that one hanging out. But anyway, this is the new version, and who knows what they might change and what they are keeping secret, but we don't have a whole lot of information about it. We know its payload capacity, we know its diameter, maximum diameter, and we know its height. And we know it has two stages. And we do know its uh, total mass, so it's 480 tons. And they said that, and I have here a 480-ton rocket, as you can see. And we do have two stages, and we do have those fancy uh, fairings that are going to be like that. Uh, in this case, in this video, we are not going to deal much with the recovery of the first stage. We are going to focus on its payload capacity and getting the numbers right. And so I'll get your input on the numbers, and we're going to test its payload to low Earth orbit. It, they said that it was supposed to be 15 tons if we are not reusing the first stage, and that's the way we'll go about it, because if we're testing the reuse the first stage number, there are a lot of very extra variables about that. So, let's go through the variables. <laughs> the, the things we don't know about the rocket are its dry mass, and so the first stage's dry mass here is 18.5 tons. That's not including the engines, but it is including these legs, not including these fins, which are procedural fins. I just added them on uh, quickly. We'll deal with that. But that 18.5 tons is including the fairings. Now, if we take a look at a procedural tank, which is how I often judge these things by, and we make it about 6.4 because maximum diameter is 7 and then it tapers a bit so we'll split the difference a bit and the second stage actually sits inside of it let me pull this so you can see this is the second stage and it sits inside you can sort of see where the top of the tanks would be and then there's also a level here where the engines are connected to so I do have a sense of what the maximum amount of volume that they can have in here is and it turns out that using all of that vol well not all of that volume using that volume with an 87 percent utilization will end up too heavy so it'd be something like that and if we fill it up with met methane and oxygen we get a 365 tons what this currently holds is 356 tons so it's a little bit less and 481 kiloliters well uh i should point out that's that's if we completely filled it up so uh, we have 180,000 methane and 229 uh, 20, 228,000 liters of oxygen and uh, this is a little bit more than that so yep and here we have a dry mass of 14.52 tons so if we were a little bit more optimistic we might use aluminum lithium yeah here it's 11.79 tons aluminum alum, aluminum lithium I, oh, there is a composite one. Well, composite, it's only 10 tons, you see. So we're being, being very conservative here if we uh, make this 18.5 tons. Uh, but there is additional structure and the fairings and all that business. So we're nearly doubling what this has as composite. So I think that's fair. And for the second stage, we don't really have a good sense of what it looks like. They had a sort of brief thing. But I've just made procedural tanks because we want to sort of kneel how big this thing is. Now, the Archimedes engines, uh, there are seven on the first stage and one on the second stage. They said that these were methane uh, oxygen engines that produced about 1,000 kilonewtons. Well, that sounded exactly like my ED4 engines from the Sajita rocket and other things. So, uh, and the Shinkansen for that matter. So I'm just putting my ED4 engines on here. My expectation is that they're too heavy, but they are too efficient. So if we go to mode 2 here, uh, 373 is almost certainly optimistic. So I'm expecting this to go over, and we want to see how much it goes over by, and then I'll adjust the numbers from there. So I'll create 
a special Archimedes configuration for this engine. And then we have seven of the sea level ones. Let's see what they have. Uh, 300 sea level, 343 vacuum, 1000 kilonewtons exactly. A little bit heavy. So, but yep, we'll see how it works. So let's launch this and see how much extra we have. Again, the right mass and we've got reasonable stages and the expected payload. So, but a lot of Delta V, as you can see. It is an interesting looking rocket here, uh, quite different. And yeah, we will see how it works. Uh, I put these RCS ports, these are my own RCS blocks that use methane and oxygen because they didn't really indicate what kind of RCS ports it would have and there wasn't any visible. So they're probably built in and everything, but uh, this was simpler until we get some answers on that and a clearer animation, if you will. SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. We don't have any launch clamps in this case. There are a few things I need to do. I need to formalize the second stage if it turns out that this is okay. There are a number of variables here, like how it separates out and whether the colliders are too tight. Um, there's also the matter, it's supposed to be hung from the top rim of the first stage, so I need a special part for that. Right now it's just sitting on the bottom on the engine bell. But also I want to get good numbers, so eventually I'll release it, but first I want to get good numbers. We probably want to have a custom Archimedes engine model, but we didn't get a very good look at it in the videos, so we'll see. It shouldn't be launching from Cape Canaveral, it should be launching from Wallops or the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, uh, but this is more scenic. Okay, that's the first stage expended. Let's open the fairing, see if this separates cleanly. Separation, separation. It's a bulky thing, but it has to hang off of the rim, and I suppose it's gonna be bulky uh, to make the best use of the space. I wonder if they will really have an extended, uh, extendable nozzle. That would be smart, considering the limited space. Okay, ignition. Let me check which... yeah, we're on the right configuration. And there it goes. Haven't seen something quite like this before. I thought about this sort of arrangement, but the reason I didn't do the... keeping the fairings on the first stage thing is because it sort of hurts payload capacity, obviously. You have to have larger fairings than usual, or, you know, you've got that long interstage bit which aren't fairings, but still additional structure to accommodate the entire second stage. But if they make their stages nice and light, it should be fine. And in fact, maybe not that light. Maybe it doesn't need to be that light in order to get this 15 tons to orbit. It doesn't seem like we need absurdly unique stages. This was also a fairly typical tank that we have. Um, I've got three tank parts there, but yeah, nothing unusual. Typical procedural tanks. And even my avionics part was fairly heavy. I think it was like 0.228 tons or something. Well, as expected, we will have way more performance than we need. And I will fix that by creating the new configurations for an Archimedes version of these engines. I won't touch the masses because we are at 480 tons and it's not clear to me whether that's 480 tons with the payload or not. So maybe we should be aiming for 495. But anyway, we've got that number more or less set for now, so we'll just work on the ISPs as the variable we change. Okay, and we're making orbit and shutdown. So with the ED4 engines, this would get to orbit with 1,200 meters per second left, which makes me feel like I overdid the ISP on the ED4 engines. But uh, anyway, let's cut that down and I'll get it so that uh, this thing does not have quite that much 
and we'll see what numbers I come up with. Okay, I've done some coarse specific impulse changes for the engines. So up here now, when we take a look at it, we have 360 seconds in vacuum, so that's substantially lower. And But we still get a fair amount of delta V out of that. And on the sea level engines, I knocked them down to 325 in vacuum. And it's only 295 at sea level right now. But taking a look at this, we still have quite a lot of delta V, don't we? Uh, 9,963. So let's just check out the dry mass of this stage. So if we take a look, oh, well, we can just judge from here. Um, it looks like about five tons. Let's just see. Uh, that's uh, 385 kilogram bit. That's two, uh, two tons. This is 700 kilograms. And then the engine itself is at 1.663. So it's about five tons, and maybe we should up that. Maybe we should make maybe we should make all this heavier. It's a little bit heavier by about 0.7 tons. But they did say that it was supposed to be really light, like the lightest upper stage ever kind of thing. So I feel a little bit guilty about doing that. And our engines are pretty heavy. And I've already talked about the four stage masses. Uh, overall, the the mass of the first stage, including the fairings and all that business, everything is about 30 tons when you take a look at the gap between 144 and 114. Uh, basically 30 tons exactly. So, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Which is, you know, fair considering the mass of the rocket. That's not a, an especially great uh, dry mass and they were boasting about a great dry mass so I don't know I, I think it might be able to get more than advertised but all right let's try and launch it with these numbers and maybe the engines you guys can tell me what you think it is maybe uh, is the dry mass heavier or are the engines even less efficient than we have here so right now 325 on the sea level ones and 360 on the vacuum ones but let's launch it and see how it goes and see what kind of surplus we actually end up with. Of course, they might just have a little bit of leeway on their numbers. You know, you don't want to reach orbit with zero delta V left or anything like that. And again, uh, for the reusable version, they would only have a payload of eight tons to orbit, it would seem. So that is not what we're testing. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. Oh, it reverted to the stock plumes. I guess I have to make a special plume for this one. Ooh, it's got a sort of sideways thing going. That's weird. All right, I'll have to fix that because I may turned it into a new part, the Archimedes part. I don't expect that that changes its efficiency or anything. Nope, I mean, it is what I said it was in the BAB. And it's just, well, this might be marginally better than the plume we had before, depending on your point of view. At least the stock plumes involve very little lag. Okay, getting ready for the end of this stage. The engines do throttle. I'm not throttling them right now, but they do throttle. That is a pretty different trajectory than the first time. Open fairing. Okay, separation. I'll just let it slide out without any RCS intervention. Okay, it's a little deviating a little bit. Oop, it bumped into the fairing a little bit. I'll fix the plumes. Just wasn't expecting that one. Okay, we're getting close to orbit now. I've throttled down a bit because I can. And I'll overburn just a little bit because maybe they were baselining to a somewhat higher orbit. So let's say that sort of thing, 300 kilometer average, still gives us 566 meters per second extra. So uh, perhaps you guys can tell me whether you think 
it might have that kind of surplus. I mean, it's only 11 seconds burn time. Or whether we should change the numbers somewhat. So anyway, we have a lot of unknowns here. We don't know what the engine really looks like. There's a lot of questions about the mass and the efficiency of the engines and what exactly the upper stage looks like. Would it have an extendable nozzle? But uh, in any case, it seems like it has plenty of margin to potentially get 15 tons to orbit. That's That doesn't seem to be the problem at all. Uh, it uh, As long as we have an engine that's got something like 360 seconds of ISP, maybe even less, and 325 seconds of ISP for the first stage, and possibly less than that. So it doesn't have to really push the boundaries of how complicated these engines need to be in order to make this system work. So anyway, we will see what happens, and I will change the model as we get more data. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.